Hey guys, what's going on? So in today's video, I'm finally gonna do it. I'm finally gonna talk about Alan Edmonds. So huge thank you to my buddy, Michael Smith, who sent me these Alan Edmond Dalton boots in oxblood color to both review and to keep or to give away. Um, but more on that in a moment. This is the first time that I've ever talked about Alan Edmonds on my channel, so this is a big opportunity for me. So thank you, Mike, for sending me these. Can't wait to talk about them. So to start out with these boots, I'll give you a little bit, bit of background with my boot story. I actually never went down the Alan Edmonds path. What I did was I went down the Johnston and Murphy path when I started getting into good shoes. I bought a couple pairs of Johnston and Murphys and very quickly somebody told me about Alden. So I jumped from, basically I went from Clark's to Johnston and Murphy was my first like sort of quality Goodyear welt shoe, I guess. I guess they're Goodyear welted, uh, though they don't really talk about that. And then I immediately, I skipped the step. It's it's normally, you know, Johnson & Murphy, then Allen Edmonds, then Alden. In this case, I skipped over Allen Edmonds altogether. I have a couple Allen Edmonds stores around me. There's one in Baltimore. There's one down in Tyson's Corner in Virginia that I've seen and I've walked past and I've walked in a couple of times. My first impressions of these are that these are just a higher quality of a Johnston and Murphy, and I do stand by that opinion still. I did get a chance to, you know, feel them, wear them a little bit. So let's talk about the design a little bit. It's gonna be a very dressy design, right? So we've got a pull tab on the back. We've got broguing, a brogue patterning all along the eyelets and down through the quarter. That's really cool. They have brogue patterning all around the back heel counter. And then the short wing tip style. The wing tips, obviously, you got the wings here. And then they're short wings, so they end short. They fall short. They, they end right here. Whereas on a long wing, that wing extends all the way back. I do like the look of the long wing, but the short wing is also just as classic. And then it's got all eyelets, seven eyelets all the way up. And then the tongue, it is half gusseted. What's cool is the tongue also has broguing too. So if you're into the broguing, this is the boot for you, I would say. The, they do not fall short on the broguing. The other thing that sort of leads me to stray from this look personally is this black stained edge on the leather sole. I have just never been a fan of that. I never thought about it till I started getting into Alden and as I saw their antique edges, you know, Alden and Grantstone, they use this antiqued edge. I really fell in love with that really warm, beautiful, natural contrast. That's why I love the antiqued natural edge as opposed to the black uh, polished edges. But again, this is a very dressy boot. For a dress boot, I wouldn't expect anything other than the black edge there. It is 360 degree Goodyear welted, fully recraftable. I've never seen a heel quite like this before. This is a Svig, S-V-I-G heel made in Italy. Oh, cool. Hammered down with five nails. And then on the inside included with the sale are these Woodlore boot trees. <laughs> These are probably $50, a $50 value in and of themselves. Yeah, these cedar boot trees. And yes, these are very well built shoes. The leather uh, does feel a little bit like sort of on the stuffier side, like it's not breathing as well. I think whatever they do at the factory, they probably super duper polish shine these. That's just my assumption because this leather doesn't feel very breathable. It's also lined. It reminds me in its essence very much like a Johnston & Murphy. A Johnston & Murphy is basically an Allen Edmonds. It's half the price. Probably a lot of corners are cut in Johnston & Murphy's. Whereas Allen Edmonds, they're actually made in the United States. Uh, I think some of the production is outsourced overseas. Uh, my buddy Take O actually did three videos on Alan Edmonds. I'll leave links to those in the description below if you guys are interested. Thank you Take for giving me a, a bit of a background course on these because I actually don't know a whole heck of a lot about the brand other than that they've been around since 1922 and they are you know sort of a quintessential well-known American shoemaker. Uh, that said I've just never been super enticed by them and I'll, I'll tell you why. It's because of these lasts. These lasts just never looked very appealing to me. So I'm a nine Brannock, eight and a half in most boots. These are in a size eight and a half. As soon as I put them on, immediately felt the crimping in the toes. This is a narrow last. This is uh, akin to what 
in Alden would be like the Plaza last or the Grant last. This is definitely a low volume last, not to mention the volume on the inside. These are lasted quite tight. So when I put them on, they feel they feel pretty tight. And so when I log into Grail, for example, my buddy Kyle Mordock started the Grail website, which is a, a boot sizing website. I highly encourage everybody to check out that site if you can and get on there and start uploading your sizing information to that, your sizing reviews. That helps out the community greatly. When I logged in and I looked up the Allen Edmund Dalton boot, it immediately recommended that I take a size nine, and I do agree. After trying these on a couple of times, even with thin socks, yeah, they're a little they're a little tight in here for me. Um, and actually, I got some footage of me wearing my Grant Stone diesels outside. Here's my Grant Stone diesel in size eight and a half, and uh, yeah, looks to me like the Grant Stone diesels are a half size longer and definitely wider. Now, heel to ball, I felt like they were the same, but now that I'm looking at them here, I can I can sort of see that it looks like the Allen Edmonds are shorter. So I would actually recommend if you, if, uh, you have a higher volume foot like me, like a, a wider foot, I would probably recommend going up a width because Allen Edmonds does offer a lot of width options, including, in fact, they offer crazy width options. They, they offer sizes <laughs> five through 16 in, quadruple A width all the way through triple E width. So if I had to buy these, I'd probably go with the eight and a half E, I think, instead of an eight and a half D, maybe an eight and a half double E. Like these, it worked with thin socks, but still a little bit of crimping there. And so if I were to go for like uh, some of their shell options or something like that, which they actually do run really good uh, shell cordovan makeups on their site. I'll get to that in a second. So before I proceed on with the video, so as I mentioned before, Mike actually donated these to my channel to either keep for myself and to wear and to do follow-up reviews on, or he said I could give these away. And actually a situation has arisen where I actually do plan to actually sell these, but for a good cause. So bottom line up front, these go for $495, full retail, $495 on the Allen Edmonds website. These are barely worn. They're in excellent condition. They actually have a topi installed as well. And uh, I'm asking $300 for them. If they were just mine, I'd probably sell them off for 200 bucks, but I am asking for a little bit more today. Um, and I will also include shipping with that price. And I will also include your choice of kilties with this, including these come with these incredible boot trees. I don't own any boot trees. Look at that thing. That fills up the whole boot, uh, including the ankle. I've never actually seen a boot tree in real life until now. I have nothing but shoe trees actually. So the, a boot tree is a first for me. So the reason why I am selling these is because I plan to donate the proceeds to my friend, Brian Yu on Instagram. Brian and I have kept in touch for quite a while now. We talk boots, he asked me sizing information, you know, we go back and forth about different makeups and just in general, it, boots are part of his hobby as well. Well, as we were talking about a month ago, he mentioned something to the effect of he's had to recently spend a lot of time in the hospital. And the reason for that is because he has a child who is sick. It's basically turned his world upside down and he needs help with hospital bills. And I told him at the time, I said, set up a GoFundMe and, and let me let me broadcast it on my channel to hopefully get some donations headed your way. And initially he was against the idea. He didn't feel comfortable with it. I said, I completely understand if I was in your situation, I'm, I, you know, I can't judge either way. Like, I don't know what I do, but I'd definitely be in, in a panic. And so a couple weeks went by and Brian, he came back to me and he said, you know what? I think the GoFundMe is a good idea. So he actually set it up. And so I'm going to leave a link in the description below, please whatever you have, five, $10, $50, $100, whatever you have to donate, this is for a very good cause. I will leave a link to that GoFundMe in the description below, as well as I will leave a description whether or not these boots are still available for sale in the description below. If you buy these, I realize they are secondhand, selling them at $300, I could easily do it on eBay, but I'm, I want whoever buys these to know that the proceeds are going to a very good cause. I'm gonna donate every penny and more to this GoFundMe myself personally. And so thank you in advance. Anybody who wants to consider buying these boots, DM me on Instagram. My username is LV. Once again, the GoFundMe is in the description below. Let's help Tristan out, please. And thank you so much in advance. It means the world to me. 
when somebody comes to me with something like this, I feel like I don't have any choice but to do everything I can to help them. And, and this is the best way that I know how. Brian's trying to raise $5,000. He's actually already, he's had the GoFundMe up for a couple days. It's already up to over $500, so that is awesome. So thank you everybody who's contributed already. And again, if you haven't, please consider doing that. So let's continue on with the review. So the standard Dalton dress boot, it's a wingtip model, it's a short wing. I'm actually, I actually more prefer long wings. And my favorite wingtips are the Alden long wing wingtip boots. I really love the gunboat style, especially the Shell Cordovan. Alden really knocks those out of the park, especially for that last, that very last. I absolutely adore that very last. It fits my foot very well. It's nice and generous, wide, round. It's not pointy like this. So on the website, they offer the Dalton in black, dark chili, and walnut brown. The black is obviously black. Dark chili is like a darker, burnished brown, sort of a maple color, I would say. And then the walnut brown is definitely more of that tan, more of that uh, Tricker's acorn color. A little bit more leaning on the more burnished look. Again, I do think that they probably polished these up pretty heavily at the factory before shipping them out because it's not just a flat acorn color. It's very much burnished throughout. They're really shining these things up a lot. This leads me to believe that this is a very traditional company. They're very much squarely in that dressy category. It's not to say they don't offer other models that are more, more casual like the Higgins Mill, which is their plain toe model. Yeah, the Higgins Mill is their plain toe model. They also have a <laughs> mock toe, which looks very similar to the Alden Indy. That's funny. So the description on the website for the Dalton boot is, our elevated boot is proof that dressing up doesn't always have to mean putting on a pair of Oxfords or loafers. The higher above the ankle design gives it a strong, timeless profile, while a range of best quality materials highlight every intricate detail of the wingtip brogue uppers. Next time you need to look your best, give your dress shoes a day off and lace up this classic staple instead. So it's a lace up, Derby wingtip boot with brogue detailing. Looks sharp and sleek, dressed up or down. Classic fit, take your regular size. In other words, I think they mean go true to size. I'd probably recommend that as well. Um, what I was saying earlier with the Grail website, as soon as I logged on to Grail, my profile, my sizing information is all loaded on there. They immediately recommended a size 9D for me in this boot. So I do believe they run mostly true to size. It's, the fit is fine with a thinner dress sock, but I do think I'd like that true to size fit. So it's 360 degree bench welt construction for durability and stability, leather lined interior, custom cork insoles that will mold to the unique shape of your foot, double layer leather soles treated with butyl for flexibility and protection from the elements. Handcrafted in Port Washington, Wisconsin with imported materials, Ultra refined premium European calfskin leather uppers can be recrafted by our experts built on the 511 footwear last. Also of note is, like I was saying earlier, Allen Edmonds sells a lot of good Shell Cordovan colors. They sell burgundy, which we all know is color eight. They sell black Cordovan, which is always available. They sell what, what they call brown cordovan, which looks like a very, very dark, almost darker than cigar, but I can't, I'm not exactly sure. Just judging by the pictures, it looks darker than cigar, but all, all their shell pictures on their website look pretty dark, so it's, it's hard for me to gauge that, but I assume it's gonna be a really dark brown cigar color. And then they also sell chili cordovan, <laughs> which I've never heard of, which looks to me to be, be kind of like the cigar color. Uh, maybe with some red added in there. I'm not exactly sure, but it looks like maybe a Alden color six or seven. I don't know. Yeah, I'm actually kind of embarrassed because as I'm looking at the Allen Edmonds website, I see a lot of Shell Cordovan. They offer a lot of, surprisingly, a lot of colors and a lot of options in Shell Cordovan. Um, following Alden for so long, I just kind of got stove piped into thinking Shell Cordovan only comes in two colors black and color eight and you know only just a handful of models and they're always available but uh no alan edmonds has oxford cap toes in color eight and black they also have randolph shell cordovan penny loafers which looks similar to like a ravello 
they do cap toes. Yeah, they have a lot of shell cordovan offerings, a lot of colors. They are all leaning towards that darker color, however. Yeah, the Higgins Mill, wow. They're, they're making me start to think that maybe shell isn't as rare as I thought prior, because <laughs> they have, <laughs> yeah, they have brown burgundy, chili, they have black cordovan. Yeah, they, they have a lot of offerings in, in shell cordovan, so pretty wild. And yeah, so this calfskin on this Dalton boot, it's got a pretty firm temper. It's it's very dense. It's very smooth. And like I said, I don't think it will breathe very well, uh, which you don't need all your shoes and boots to breathe, right? Especially for a dress shoe. This is a boot, if I were to keep it, this is a boot that I would have worn and probably characterized it as a fairly stuffy boot. Like as in, it doesn't let my foot breathe in the ball or the instep area and it also just the leather itself doesn't breathe so i would characterize this boot for myself as stuffy but if you know your allen edmund size it, it's it'll be a phenomenal fit i'm sure at a size nine these would be a phenomenal fit or even at a size eight and a half e go up a width or two it'd be it'd be a great fit and then mike actually had topies installed on these as well so you don't these were originally on a leather sole so you don't have to worry about wearing through that leather sole so the brogue boot was my first boot love these definitely do not disappoint the last like i said not perfect for my foot type but all things considered i am impressed by these boots they're very well made they live up to their heritage they live up to their reputation i would say thanks a lot for watching guys what do you guys think about the allen edmund dalton boot this is my first time actually ever wearing or being around Allen Edmonds in person. I am impressed. They do live up to the legacy. And again, if you are interested in buying these, reach out to me. I'm for LV on Instagram. I will leave a link to that in the description below. Again, once they sell, I'll leave a note in the description so I don't have, you know, so, so people aren't asking me, hey, are they still available? Because that has happened in the past. And so moving forward, to just to be fair to everybody, I, I want to be as transparent as possible, not have people chasing shadows. Thanks so much for your support, everybody. Again, if you're interested in donating to my buddy Brian and his son Tristan, the link is going to be the first one in the description below. Go fund me. I love this community. This is just a great community of people guys that are into boots there i find that they're also the most uh thoughtful people some of the most interesting people i do believe that they are also the most some of the most caring people so uh we can show that show our support to brian and tristan by donating in the gofundme in the link below so thanks so much for watching guys please leave me your thoughts in the comments below let's keep the love of boots alive i will see y'all in my next video